The Zwico 12-45 Pro is the kit lens supplied with the OM5. For many years I used the 12-100 Pro lens on my EM1 Mark II, which I consider one of the best optics to come from the Olympus stable, but I wasn't prepared to be bowled over by the excellence of this new optic, despite its limited zoom range and only f4, yes f4, but it is maximum constant aperture. Regulars to my channel will know that I am not technically minded, presenting my views with images and not numbers. However, I was initially concerned that the 12-45 did not have its own image stabilizer, having to rely instead on the camera's stabilizer. I needn't have worried. One of the major advantages, yes, major advantages of Micro Four Thirds is extra depth of field, even at full aperture. This has led to the wrong assumption that you cannot limit depth of field by throwing a background out of focus from the subject. A basic knowledge of depth of field and how the distance is determined by aperture and focal length of lens will avoid this gaffe. Computerized depth of field control by a camera, even when successful, does not tell you how it is achieved. If you already understand traditional depth of field from your, say, film days, the numbers might be different, but the results look very similar. This is handheld at, yes, a fifth of a second. Despite looking at diagrams, I don't understand how image stabilization works, so I go against my own doctrine and just point the camera and hold my breath. And it's amazing how that works too. It works most of the time at exposure values up to two whole seconds at wide angle. The other problem with church interiors are multifarious light sources. By saving to RAW, I can make a more informed decision about white balance in the comfort of my home. Also, I shoot on program. This is not auto, another common mistake by the way. By default, it will use the largest aperture allowing me to keep the ISO at 200 for quality, often expected by my clients. And don't forget, I have extra depth of field at f4, so that's going to help as well, isn't it? A classic case of diverse lighting. What you can't see are plenty of other people milling about. I had to wait a bit. It is almost a snap so hand-holding is essential. I preset exposure on program and white balance auto, relying on autofocus, which is accurate in most situations aided by extra depth of field. Provided I save to RAW, then any adjustments are made at home in Lightroom or Photoshop. The only luxury I allow myself is to spot meter, here near a highlight, a craft in itself, but I am a dab hand, as I have been doing it for years. It is experience that cannot be taught. I hardly ever use Matrix or ESP. This is a snap for different reasons. I rather like my audience, actually. Well dressing is a tradition seen in the Peak District and a few other places as well, and the cloudy sky has allowed detail to show at its best advantage, whereas direct sunlight will cause unwanted shadows. There is a touch of sun on the trees, but the evenness of light allows the use of ESP, although I resorted to my tried and trusted method of spot. The main problem with this shot, one that you could pass by so easily, is to balance the contrasting warm and cold hues. When saving to RAW, it is a case of spot metering, aided of course by the electronic finder, one of the best photographic improvements in recent years. Nevertheless, it took a couple of attempts to get something acceptable, and the two I kept are quite different. It was necessary to lighten the floor in post-production. Not an easy shot. Although the light appears to be even, 
The windows are much brighter than the interior, and I don't want to overexpose them, not even the whites. I spot meter the windows and correct the interior in post-production. Now, this can cause noise, but recent cameras appear to be much better in containing this, and software today have very sophisticated ways of removing it in post-production. A pub owned by the National Trust in Belfast. Its amazing Victorian architecture beautifully restored. Now, like Westminster Abbey, it is a question of balancing the exposure of the window with the interior, but it's much darker, the seats being black, then preserving detail requires accurate exposure and meticulous adjustment in Adobe Lightroom. Success is based on experience, not some magic number out of the blue on a secret place to spot meter from regarded as the norm. No, every picture, every single picture is different. Less is more can be the answer. The Titanic Belfast building is impressive as a whole, its design resembling the hulls of four boats, but its structure going in on telephoto is also very impressive. Spot metering the structure but leaving the cloud slightly underexposed helps to highlight patterns, and a case where adjustment later to the raw image pays dividends as a choice, because this can be altered later if I change my mind, and I'm very good at that. Whilst photographing near the O2 Arena in North Greenwich, I couldn't resist this artistic pattern. I didn't explore where the stairs led to, which I trust lives up to its promise. Might have changed my mind, perhaps. You never know. Leaving Birmingham New Street Station, you might be confused by a distorted world. The original shot included the sky, but it was a distraction, so I cropped it away to focus on the patterns created by the polished grass that wraps itself around the station façade. I don't like burnt-out clouds in landscapes, but metering landscapes under a cloudy sky can usually be easier with ESP or Matrix than under full sunlight. Against the light, landscapes require spot metering to avoid burnt-out highlights and dense shadows. Every view has to be assessed individually. The only place to spot meter is based on experience, helped of course by an electronic finder. I normally spot meter near a highlight, allowing shadows to become underexposed that can be corrected safely in Lightroom without adding noise. I'll be honest, I didn't get it right the first time. The viewpoint is the tower of St. Mary's Church, but you need to be fit and slim to make it to the top. There are a lot of steps. General views of cities and towns require good light, but not necessarily strong sunlight. From cloud cover, it can be seen that the sunlight is filtered. This has retained modelling in the buildings without casting unwanted heavy shadows that would mask detail. I still use the 12 to 45 Pro lens, and if I'm honest, out of preference. Now an octogenarian, whilst I am capable of walking 10 miles over rough ground that would defeat many people half my age, and with a much heavier and larger 12 to 100 Pro lens, now what I take becomes increasingly important. It is another case of less is more. Luggage for my recent two-day visit to Belfast was simply the OM5 and 12-45 Pro lens backed up with the EM10 Mark II and the 12-50 lens, plus of course my toothbrush, all packed into a rucksack small enough to take into the plane without resorting to the hold. I researched the entire trip before going away and left at home anything I thought that I might need. Now that really focused the mind, you know.